All right, let's take a look at list navigation. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the incidents form. Our incident list, rather. We'll go to type incident up here and then click all. And then we have our incident list here on the right. And we can see that there's columns. There's number, opened, short description. These fields are all columns in the incident table. All right, so what we're going to do now is I want to show how we can personalize this list. So we personalize, and we can actually, this is something that a, a fulfiller can do for these incidents. They can go on this list, and they can, let's say we would just want to see these three. All right, there we go. And now we can see that we only show number, open, and short description. And if you ever want to revert back to the default, then we can just click on that again and click Reset to Column Default. Now what happens if we want to configure the columns available for everybody? So if we right-click on one of these columns, headers, we can go to right-click, we can go to Configure, we can go to List Layout. And here we can see the same sort of configuration view as the personalization, but once we configure here, we can, it configures the default for everyone. So we can tack on, uh, let's just tack on a active. And we can throw that to the top. Set it right here save okay so now we can see that that column header is added for everybody all right so from this view you can navigate the list of incident records within your service now instance uh, this is really important you want to be able to find an incident pretty quick you can search by short description you can say uh network all right, now that gives you everything that has um, that has that's that has a short description that starts with the network. Now, if you tack on a star ahead of that, then it's going to give you every short every incident record that has a short description that contains a uh, network. So we see that there's four more or a four total of four now because we're also including. Uh, items such as issues with networking. And then if you uh, go up here, we can click remove next condition and that resets our filter. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at another way we can do this. So if we want to say uh, only show uh, incidents with the new state right here with this column, we can right click on here and click show matching and we can see that we're only showing the new records now um, now you might look at this say equals one what is that well this new field right here that's label uh, uh, within the actual data uh, the the new record or the new value is equal to one so on uh, the database level it's equal to one but for the users it appears as new Another uh, nifty feature we can do, show real quick is show hide filter. Once we click on this, we can see uh, a, a sort of interactive query builder. And so what we can do here, we can click uh, or state is in progress. Uh, and then we can say run. And now we show all incident records that are new or in progress. And then we can also, actually, before we move on, we can change. We can do this a little bit easier. Uh, we can get rid of this for some fields you can do is one of, and then you get a, a, a list of choices that's specifically for any choice field. You can go over here and click new. If you hold the control button, you can click 
in progress on hold. You can select multiple ones. But if you let go of the control, it's going to uh, bounce you back. All right, so let's do run, and we can see all this. We can see that the, the records are now only returning those three states. Now let's also add another one. We can do and, and we can say and, and we can start typing here. Short description, it'll populate that for us. Instead of starts with, we want contains, and we can do network. And press enter. Instead of just clicking run every time, you can just press enter, and you can see that now we're showing um, all incidents that are in one of these three states, new, in progress, on hold, or, um, or rather, and the short description contains network. Now, we don't want to have to reconfigure this every time. So if we want to save this specific filter, we can, um, we can do that. We're going to save filter and say um, network incidents. And we can click save. And then if we click on the hamburger menu up here, we can, do, uh, we can go to filter. And we can say, oh, look, here's network incidents. So that way you don't have to go and rebuild it every single time. Uh, it's a really nifty feature. So looking at this list, uh, you can see that there's some fields that allow you to click into, uh, such as caller, assignment group, assign to. Um, so what that means is that these fields are reference fields. They reference another field. Or they reference another record. Or they, re or they reference a record in another table. So if we click into this, we can see, oh, look, here's Joe employee, and his title is administrative assistant. Okay. So if we go back and we take a look, we can see that all, all we see here is the um, the display name for this caller. So what I want to do is add the title for this caller into this list field. Now, from a personalized view, you can't do that. This can only be done uh, via the list layout configuration. And this enables other users who's, who are personalizing their list to add or remove this column. So if we click on caller, we can see that it has a plus here, and we can also see it, the fact that it's green. So if we click on it, and then we ha uh, if we click if we hover over this, we can say expand selected reference field. So we're going to click that. And then uh, here you can see incident fields, and you can see dot caller user fields. Now, you can access all the fields on that user record. So what I want to do is scroll down to title, and then I want to click that over here. And then I'm going to move it up to right here. Okay. And click Save. And now we can see that Joe employee and his title. We can see his title right there. So that's that's a name for that is dot walking. But yes, it's a very nifty feature to enable. All right, another great feature is being able to edit these records in this list view. So what you can do is you can, um, let's go ahead and change the state for multiple instances here. So we just click on this, left click there. And then if you hold control, left click, drag, and then let go of mouse click and then let go of control. And then you can double click on any one of these selected states. And this will update all of the incidents selected to that specific state. So let's just change them all to in progress. All right, so we can see that the state's been updated. And then uh, I'm going to 
reset my column defaults. I want to add something here. Let's add a, this will be for later on, but I want to show this. So go down to, or personalize your list columns and add parent incident on this. Okay. And then uh, scroll to the right and let's say, let's click, hold control, drag, and then double click on here. And we can see that we've got this little magnifying glass. Uh, and this, this shows up whenever you have like um, a reference field selected. So you can click this and it brings up all the potential candidates uh, that can be a parrot incident. So let's go to number. Let's, uh, let's uh, do this incident. Let's we'll do incident 59. We can press enter. This just works like the rest of the uh, search features that we exported before. And we'll click on here. And then we'll click checkbox. And boom, it sets those as well. And you can also just type it in here. And uh, click checkbox, and that works the same way. So what I want to show you now is if you right click and you go to configure, uh, we can go to list control. Here we can change the label if we want. By default, it's going to be the plural form of incidents. Um, uh, we, here we can see the defined roles. In order to create a new record on this table incident, you have to have the ITIL role. Here you can do things such as omit new button, omit edit button. Um, some of these features are only available from the, uh, if you're viewing an, a, the an incident record via the related list. So uh, if we go back and we go into the incident, we scroll all the way down. We can see here some related lists, so we can um, we can uh, take a look here. We can right click, or we can click here. I mean, we can click here, and then go to uh, list control. And here you can see for this affected CI, so you can't create or edit um, any CIs here. You can define the list edit type so uh, if you edit in line on a cell then you can uh, configure that where it will either save immediately save data by rows or just disable it altogether so omit if empty <clears throat> that means that if there are no uh, no records in this list, then it will hide the related list. Omit columns if empty. That's going to omit any columns if they're just completely empty. Um, you can just say, hey, don't show any filters for this list. You can uh, say, don't enable links in this list. So, you know how we clicked into the record earlier for that user and explored the title. I think his name was Joe. Well, if you click on this, it's going to disable the ability to click into that. All right, let's navigate back to the incident list. Another way of doing that, if you type in the table name and then type in dot list, press enter, sort of a shortcut to get to the list of incidents. Okay, and then uh, right click, configure, list control. Now omit drill down link if we check box that. And that gets rid of the ability to click and drill down into that. It's very rare that you want to use that. But there it is. Disable that again. All right, now let's take a look at the la another list control feature, hierarchical lists. So this can be configured to where if there are records that are children, then you can show them as a, as a hierarchy and uh, sort of like if you're navigating a, a directory structure in Windows or Mac, you click the little plus and it drills down all the subdirectories. So if we uh, click on hierarchical lists, so we've enabled hierarchical lists and we 
open that up, but we can see task SLA show. Let's change that. Go down to child instance. We can see child instance there. Let's configure related lists. And we can scroll to the top, make incident, parent incident relationship first. And then if we go back to our incidents view, and then we expand this, we can see these child incidents right here. These incidents are children of this incident. All right, so now it's your turn. Uh, I want you to go ahead and go into the list view for incidents and configure, uh, not just personalize, but configure the list layout and add a dot walked field. You can go ahead and do the one like we did in the example to where we added the title for the user to that list layout. And then also uh, from that list view, go ahead and create a filter and save that filter uh, and you can give it whatever name you want. And then we can go ahead and run the verification and make sure everything looks good on your instance and move on to the next section.